let's say we have these five people and they have decided to start a company. Let's say they name their company Sample Co. And they've got some investors and the investors have given them some money and said, start a company, figure out what you're going to do. And each of them takes on some different behaviors as they have their first meeting to talk about the future of Sample Co. This guy over here, person number one, he says, well, the investors have decided that I am in charge. So he has the power. This guy, person number two, over here, quickly becomes apparent that he is the smartest. He has the best ideas. And this person, maybe this is a woman, person number three, she is the most motivated. She shows up early to the meetings, works the hardest, starts things the soonest. This person, person number four, is very strategic and he or she is the best at figuring out the how-to's. And this person, our last individual down here, he talks about the future, talks about where they could go as a company and what it will be like when they get there. And I would contend that this person, number five, is the one who is acting essentially the most like a leader because the most essential thing that leaders do is they describe the future. Describing the future as a leader requires three basic abilities. Number one, it requires the ability to see the future, to imagine things that don't exist yet, to envision future realities, to wonder what's possible. Number two, it requires the ability to believe in an uncertain future, to believe that it is possible and that we can make it happen. Number three, most importantly, requires the ability to communicate what that person sees in a clear and compelling way to the other people in the organization. So the most essential thing that a leader does is describe the future and answer these questions. Where are we going? And what will it be like when we get there?